You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weird Science Comics YouTube channel, where I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to have a news show, a comic book news show that we'll do right here, right now, and depending on whether or not people enjoy it, I'll continue it or I'll scrap it. We'll see. And for this first one, we'll talk just DC and Marvel news. If this gets, you know, something going on, we'll also include indie and manga stuff as well. But we're going to start with DC Comics and the story that everybody was talking about down at the rec center. Meet DC's new super slow superhero, Circuit Breaker. I don't know that I love calling a superhero super slow. Seems sus to me, but that might be me. But here we go. Saw a lot of people losing their mind about this. I am going to stress the idea of don't lose your mind until the character actually comes out. And then if you don't like the character, lose your mind all you want. Lose your mind so much you never find it again. I don't know. But here's the info. This press release and some of the things in this news story do put up red flags for me. But I will let you know what those are. Here we go. Circuit Breaker, a brand new superhero that will make his debut. In February 14th, Lazarus Planet Dark Fate number one one shot as part of the larger Lazarus Planet event that kicked off January 10th with Lazarus Planet Alpha number one. And I ended up doing a review of Lazarus Planet Alpha number one with Wes at Thinking Critical, and we both liked it. And I'm going to do my own review here probably in the next couple of days. And one of the things I stress then and will in my own video is the idea where I like Lazarus Planet Alpha. But as we go from there, we're going to have a lot of these one shots that Mark Wade is not involved with. We have a ton of creators involved. Will the editorial at DC, which has had so many problems, kind of meshing everything together when it's not that hard? How are they going to end up making all of this work? And also there are some creators that aren't exactly top tier in my mind. Now, one of those may or may not be. A.L. Kaplan. A.L. Kaplan is the one who created Circuit Breaker. I couldn't find much on them. I end up finding they're a cartoonist and designer with a degree in psychology. I mean, really, here I am, podcaster, bullshitter with a degree in psychology. I actually do. And that doesn't mean jack squat to me. I mean, I know what a psychology degree does for you. It does nothing. So hopefully there's something going on here. But A.L. Kaplan, who ends up not even in this press release doing a quote or an explanation of the character, that worries me because I want to see what A.L. Kaplan knows about, say, the still force that Circuit Breaker is tapping into. I want to know if they end up saying things that make me feel like they know the characters in the DC universe, not just Circuit Breaker. And there's no quote because the big quote here that DC put out is from editor Andrea Shea. I I really don't need to know what DC editor Andrea Shea says about a character. I want to know what the character is and what it's about from the creator, but here we go. Real name Jules Jourdain. Very fancy. The trans-masculine hero who goes by the pronouns he, they. Circuit Breaker is blessed or cursed with the dreaded still force. During the Dark Fate special, according to DC editor Andrea Shea, who also calls the character the prettiest and most fabulous cowboy. Again, I know people are going to lose their minds about this. There's a couple triggering words in there for certain people. But here's my point is that I I don't care if the circuit breaker is the prettiest and most fabulous cowboy. That has nothing to do with anything. I want to know. What is going on with the character now? You do mention the still force. You do mention a name. But I kind of need a little more than just the prettiest and most fabulous cowboy. Now, the whole play, this is in the Lazarus Planet Dark Fate one shot. The only thing I could say is that A.L. Kaplan doing this new to D.C., new to this. Joshua Williamson has a story in that Dark Fate. But does that mean he's going to help out A.L. Kaplan? Because the still force is kind of his thing. Hopefully he can lend a little hand. But my bigger point of this is that Lazarus Planet Dark Fate special, you end up having stories by Tim Seeley, Joshua Williamson, Danny Culver, A.L. Kaplan, and Alyssa Wong. It's going to be a train wreck. I mean, I you could just say all you want about the circuit breaker, but I think this one's going to be a bomb. 
and that's and I don't mean duh bomb. I mean a bomb. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see how it is. Like I said, everybody has to come. I know that it seems a lot of times in these that Andre Shea saying he's the prettiest, most fabulous cowboy. That seems like you know almost like fighting words. It seems like they are trying to trigger people with that. Don't play the game. Just relax. Please relax. I know people won't, but just relax. Let's see. And when the story comes out, maybe it'll be a really good story. But if it's not, we'll be here to say that it's bull crap. And when you you have to play it straight here and just go with it, right? Let's just go with it. But the next story is Batman Spawn goes unplugged in February. DC has announced the Batman Spawn special will return in February and April with a second printing on February 7th. An unplugged, which is unlettered inks only version on February 14th and as part of a new collection in April. Of course, that is the recent special Batman Spawn by Todd McFarlane, Greg Capullo. Now, I love the idea that they say that this unplugged, which has no letters, it's just inks only. That's kind of what you need. That story stunk. I mean, if you liked it, God bless you. But that story was was horrible. So why don't you just get to the point and show us what everybody was buying that for anyway, which is the art. You get to have a little bit different play with the unlettered inks only deal, which is kind of cool. Batman Spawn number one features the villainous Gotham City Secret Society, the Court of the Owls, who enlists the Hell Spawn to finally put an end to the Dark Knight. That's what happened, I guess. DC said the Batman Spawn Unplug will highlight and put Capullo and McFarlane's artwork front and center. Again, 99.9% of the people were buying it for the artwork. That story, no. As to the future, those who read Batman Spawn number one know the story ended with an open door for a sequel, but neither DC nor McFarlane has announced any plans. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And that is the quick bit of DC news. We're going to move over to Marvel, a couple stories here. And like I said, we'll see how this plays out. If people like it, we'll continue it and kind of refine it, you know, work it down, rub it. Hey, it's like the Belle Biv DeVoe way of doing things. Marvel Comics stories here. The Guardians of the Galaxy explore strange spaceways in Marvel Comics upcoming series. Now, I will point out most of the stories that I end up getting, I don't know why I hit that, are from Newsarama. I just grabbed the deal. This one's actually from a website, space.com. And I want to give them a shout out because I don't know what they're thinking in this. And it makes me giggle. I don't know if everybody else will giggle as much as me, but I did. 2023 will not only deliver director James Gunn's highly anticipated Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 in theaters come May, but also a new ongoing comic book series from Marvel Comics beginning this spring. Now, here we go. You you tell me if you agree. Written by, quote unquote, certified superstars. Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly, certified superstars they are. Whoever certified that should lose their license right now. That's just me, and I'm going to hit that for that. With electrifying artwork courtesy of Kev Walker, Predator, and accent it with, I love the verbiage in this, the electrifying artwork courtesy of Kev Walker, and accent it with vibrant hues via veteran colorist Matt Hollinsworth. Guardians of the Galaxy number one arrives on April 12, 2023. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love that. Accent it with vibrant hues. Oh, my. Oh, jeez. Here's the official synopsis of this Guardians of the Galaxy. One year ago, the Guardians of the Galaxy were destroyed. Their optimistic future shattered by the betrayal of one of their own. Now they ride the space lanes of a lawless corner of the galaxy, trying to outrun their tragedy. You know, you never can outrun that tragedy. Can they rediscover their heroism and humanity on the bleakest frontier? And I will tell you, I'm reading this, and I swear to God, I don't know why. I thought it was saying, can they re- rediscover their heroin? I'm like, now this story is taking a turn, right? That would be crazy. But, and that would be a bleakest frontier. Say no to drugs, kids. Can they forgive the failures of their past? Or will they fade into the dark, eternally unforgiven? Ooh-wee! Here are some quotes. This one's from Jackson Lansing. Welcome to a whole new era for the Guardians of the Galaxy, riding like mad through an endless alien dust storm of sun-soaked tragedy, intense violence, and deeply dysfunctional heroes, Lansing said in a Marvel press release. I'm going to put this through the Make Sense computer. That said nothing. 
definitely said nothing. Uh, Colin Kelly, though, added to that, saying, Together, we're guiding the Guardians on a new trail, one that will make them look inwards even as they face the threats over the next horizon. Grab your element gun, true believers. It's time to go for a brand new ride. Uh, True believers you're throwing in there. I don't know that that's his place. That's just me. You know, enough said. That's what I think. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Lansing and Kelly. I used to like Lansing and Kelly. At one point at D.C., I used to say that they were like the they were the relief pitchers. They were the closers because every time some sort of series was ending, but the people writing it didn't have time to end it. They were off to bigger and better things. They'd bring in Lansing and Kelly to end it. And so I, I actually gave them props for doing that. Then they start doing more and more on their own. And yeah, not a big fan. Not a big fan of their Captain America stuff right now. Not a big fan of their Kang story. Everything is so over the top narration. It all feels like they never are telling like an original story. Like the, the stuff they're doing might be original, but it's it's wonky. And then the other stuff is just relying on fan service bullshit. But that's just me. That is just me. I, sometimes I like fan service bullshit, but not not most of the time. Right? And that's just me again. I'm just telling you what's me. By the way, I have a psychology degree. Did you know that? Storm returns to her punk rock days for flashback solo series. Oh, my goodness. We are going to have the Mohawk in the upcoming five-issue Storm limited series. Writer and classic 80s X-Men editor Anna Senti, who I love Anna Senti. And Anna Senti has had some classic stories, but more classic to me are kind of more recent stuff. I'm talking like Catwoman, Katana from the DC No 52 stuff. Cool wee, they're so bad, they're great. I had a kick out of those. And artist Sid Kochian, I think, but fresh off the Gambit Limited series with writer Chris, Chris Claremont, will flash back to Storm's 80s punk heyday for a story that will push Storm's powers to her limits while even introducing a new retro villain and a previously unseen love interest for Aurora Monroe. There was a story, and I think it was a Cap story. I forget what book. It was like an anthology book that Anna Senti did last couple years. And she ended up having Cap riding his motorcycle. You know when he rides the motorcycle, he puts a shield in the front? That's cool. Well, ended up getting a flat tire. Well, then he ended up pulling over, going to some place, and he was trying to fix this flat tire with a blowtorch. And I'm not joking. That was in that. Me and Brandon were doing our Marvel podcast at that point. Boy, we had a laugh out of that one. Like, really? That's what you're doing? Who wait. I joke about how cool it is that Marvel brings back us old timers to sing our greatest hits for the Legends series, but it truly is an honor. Enjoy no sending states in a Marvel announcement. When editors Mark Basso and Drew Baumgartner, oh, uh, Drew and Mark did this, huh? Asked me to write a story with Punk Storm. I wanted the story to reflect her outfit. I thought about punk musicians like, now get this, you, you want to impress people with your punk rock knowledge. All right. She thought of Iggy Pop and the Sex Pistols. There you go. I mean, at least she didn't throw out the Ramones there to make, you know, it more generic. But and their rebellious attitude. Now I say that I do really like Iggy Pop. Not a big Sex Pistols fan. It's one of those things. If you like the Sex Pistols, it's more attitude than music. Right. You know what I'm saying? But boy, I do like the Ramones. So I, I wasn't dissing the Ramones. Storm number one goes on sale May 24th with a cover from Alan Davis and like I said, this is going to be a quick first episode to see how things go. And this is the last story. And it's one of those things that I am not a big Jason Aaron fan. If you had listened to the Marvel podcast that I do, you would you would know that. You'd also know that, hey, he hasn't really even talked about the Avengers book in months because it stinks. There you go. There's my review. It's one of those where the review should just be, listen, this book sucks. I'll get back to you if it gets better. I'm never getting back to you. It's terrible. But I do like Jason Aaron and and the Darth Vaders. So here we go. Darth Vader stars in Brutal Tales of Terror and Black, White, and Red limited series. Darth Vader, Black, White, and Red will bring Marvel's tradition of black and white monocolor anthology comics to the Star Wars galaxy for a collection of Tales of Terror set throughout the Dark Lord of Sith's brutal history. Each issue of Darth Vader Black, White, and Red features a main story from writer Jason Aaron, 
who launched Marvel's first modern volume of its Star Wars title in 2015 and is really, really good, and longtime Marvel Star Wars artist Leonard Kirk. Leonard Kirk, all right, which forms a four-part tale spanning all four issues of the limited series. What I was going to do there is I was going to make a joke because it's like Leonard Nimoy and Captain Kirk combined, and I don't want any of that Star Trek nonsense in anything Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars fan, Star Trek, and go pound sand. It's too fancy for me. I'm not a thinking man. I don't need a thinking man sci-fi. I need adventure in space, right? And right now, I don't really like much of the new Star Wars, so I shouldn't really push Star Wars that much. Quote uh, from Jason Aaron here, I love getting to let Darth Vader cut loose with all his power in such an epic way in the past, says Aaron, and I couldn't pass on the chance to revel in that dark side again and put Vader in an even more perilous situation and then see how he carves his way out. I'm guessing with his lightsaber. That's maybe. Then the first issue will also include a story from writer-artist Peach Momoko, known for her continuing Demon Day saga, which reimagines popular Marvel heroes and stories with a Japanese mythology twist. Guessing we're going to get a mythology twist with the Darth Vader, right? And it'll also include the Star Wars debut of writer Torin Grunbach, because, of course, Jason Aaron's involved, and Torin Grunbach's not soon to follow. So you just get that, right? So who will work with an artist yet to be named? I wish it was just artist yet to be named. That'd be cool. It's like Prince. Likewise, Darth Vader, Black, White, and Red Number 1 will include more creators still to be announced, along with more stories. And hopefully they'll get some decent enough creators. They're hinging on the deal of Jason Aaron back writing Darth Vader to be the main draw, and it is. But hopefully they get some cool little things in there. I have some guesses in my head right now. We're going to get like a Jody Hauser who's, I don't know, always shows up on Star Wars and said, oh, it's like that magic ability. It's like Beetlejuice. You say Star Wars three times, Jody Hauser's already written three issues. You also will probably get Alyssa Wong in there maybe, you know, just to, you know, do things. So that is that. Is that. Hey, everybody. That is the news for this week. Some of this a little older news. I just kind of grabbed some things. I As I said. This is kind of a litmus test of how this might run and whatever. Uh, just let me know what you think, and I'll continue doing it. I know that a lot of people would have put like all these things as individual videos, you know, maximize them clicks. I just wanted to see if this works. If not, we'll, we'll maximize the clicks later. But thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know, and I will talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.